Hey everyone, David here with the first figure review of 2015 and if you guys managed to catch my Christmas video from last year, all the way last year, or technically a couple of weeks ago, I showed in that video that I actually went ahead and purchased through BBTS a four pack of Arkham uh, figures that were being reissued by DC Collectible and out of those figures one of them is Harley Quinn from Batman Arkham City that you see before you. And since I reviewed Arkham Asylum Harley Quinn that came in that four pack I figured it's appropriate to review uh, Harley Quinn from Arkham City. Now there's one thing that I should mention before getting started on this review and it is a bit of a spoiler for Arkham City so if you have not played Arkham City then eh, just just mute the video for literally like 10, 15, maybe 20 seconds. It's a very pivotal plot device that happens at the end of Ar Arkham City and a lot of people are wondering where Arkham Knight is going to go and which direction they're going to take that game considering the events that happen at the end of, Ar of Arkham City. And one of th that event actually has to do with the design of Harley Quinn here. So if you have not played Arkham City, if you're one of the few people that are late in the game and are managing to go through the for the, the three Arkham games, I guess even Arkham Origins, to catch up before Arkham Knight releases, then please mute the video now. So, so something that I should point out is that apparently the Harley Quinn that came, that came in this four-pack is actually the Widow Harley Quinn edition in which she is uh, mostly in all black and a little bit of red, but mostly black. Because ob obviously she's mourning the death of Joker, her, her, her hubby, you know, her boyfriend, her husband, or whatever the hell. Her, her, her endless love. So obviously she is going to be in mourning and she is very fashionable. So obviously she's going to correlate that with her fashion and she's going to be dressed all in black. And this is basically the design of Harley Quinn in the bonus DLC that was released after Arkham City for Arkham City entitled Harley Quinn's Revenge. And this is actually the version that came packed in the four pack. I didn't actually get the original Harley Quinn, which is a bit of a shame because you know, I have the original Arkham Asylum uh, design for Harley Quinn in that Arkham Asylum 4-pack, so I kind of wanted the original Arkham City Harley Quinn to come in this 4-pack, but unfortunately, I only got the Widow version. However, I'm not going to complain too much because I mainly bought the 4-pack so that I can collect the Arkham City Batman so I can have like all Batmans, especially after the Arkham Knight version is going to get released. So it's, I simply consider Ar uh, Harley Quinn here to be a bit of a bonus, so I can't complain too much. I'm getting something. So now that the spoilery section of this review is out of the way for those who have not played Arkham City, I am now back to doing the review and maybe I'll put some sort of little thing up on the screen saying, hey, spoilers are done now, so you're uh, safe to go ahead and unmute the video and, and continue watching. So here we have Harley Quinn. She is essentially uh, somewhat of a redeco -de -de of the Harley Quinn version, except with a few minor touches because she's changed her outfit not only in the color but also in some of the uh, some of the ways that it's actually designed they have to also change some of the some of the molding because they can't simply just redo the figure and honestly it's a, it's it's a little bit lazy when it comes to certain companies who just take an original figure and repaint it i know hasbro does it an awful lot with transformers but with DC collectible. I'm, I'm expecting a little bit more, and they actually went ahead and changed some of the mold of the of the original figure to suit her the design of her outfit uh, in Arkham City. Her outfit overall is a little bit more clothed. She's covered up a little bit more, but that's not saying a whole lot because she's still a little bit revealing and it's a little bit more pro uh, provocative. But still, it's a different design than the one from Arkham Asylum. And for comparison's sake, I'm gonna go ahead and stand her up along with Arkham Asylum Harley Quinn that I got right here. So let me just set it to the side because there's almost no way that I'm gonna, that I'm going to be able to do this review without comparing the two because that's essentially what it is. Because besides the obvious differences, there's not a whole lot of new things that DC Collectible did with this version of Harley Quinn. Obviously, her outfit is a little bit different. Uh there's some significant changes, not huge ones, but uh, there's some changes in, in the design of her outfit, and DC Collectible actually went out of their way to change some of the mold so that it actually looks like a different figure, even though there are some uh, no noticeable similarities that makes you think that, yeah, they just went back into the computer, they changed a couple of things, but overall, it's almost practically the same exact figure. 
for one, you'll notice she actually has the similar slant as the original Arkham Asylum figure did. The only difference, however, is that she is slanting to her right and she's slanting to her left. So it's almost like they went back into the computer. And you know how in Photoshop, if you want to flip a image horizontally, you just right click and then you press right there, flip horizontally. That's essentially what they did with the overall figure when it came to the 3D printing process of the figure. And it's, it's kind of funny, but it is somewhat of a noticeable change nonetheless. Uh, her articulation is essentially the same exact thing as well. Her head rotates 360 degrees, like so. Her arm can rotate vertically 360 degrees as well as uh, rotate horizontally, like so. It only goes about that far, but it's actually a little bit more, it, it actually has more mobility then, I'm sorry, I'm blacking out the light that right there, but it has just a little bit more mo mobility because one of the changes in the mold is that she doesn't have that part here that is part of her outfit in Arkham Asylum. In the Arkham Asylum version, she has this portion of her outfit that kind of hinders the movement of her arm a little bit, so... That was somewhat of an issue, but I couldn't complain too much because, hey, that's part of the, the design. Over here, because her outfit's different, and I went ahead and molded the figure accordingly, she's actually able to move her arm just a tad bit more. Not as much, not too much, but a little bit more. She also has the bicep swivel right there. She can bend at the elbow and wrist articulation with a swivel joint right there. The same exact thing for the other arm, so not, no need to go into that. No waist articulation once again, so that's a bit of a bummer. And if you didn't already notice right there, her belt can actually move around similar to how her skirt was able to move around too. Fortunately here, because it's not a skirt, I don't mind the belt moving about because she still has pants underneath. Whereas over there, that was a little too pro provocative for my taste, especially considering this is an action figure, you know. I like my women to be, you know, real. <laughs> what I do like about this belt, though, is that in a nice little homage to the Arkham Asylum Joker, she also has a chain right here that's actually real. Now, when I say real, I don't know if it's actual metal or if it's simply just plastic, but because it's so small, I can't really tell. So, similarly to the Joker, I, I don't know if this is actual metal or plastic, but... Just like the Joker, it's a nice little touch. And then you got her legs right there. I like the design overall because eh, it looks nice. You know, the, the molding is very accurate. But the articulation is practically the same. You can move her leg that far back and that much forwards. Doesn't really extend horizontally. You can make her do the splits, unfortunately. Even though Harley Quinn will look like the type of girl to use that in her fighting style. You can bend at the knee about that far. And just like the original Arkham Asylum Harley Quinn, that is actually about it for the articulation in her legs. And while I have the feet on camera, I think it's interesting to note that this time she does not have any platform boots. She does have a platform heel of some kind there, but it actually starts to end right about there at her tippy toes. So because of that, she's actually a little bit shorter than the Arkham Asylum Harley Quinn. Let me get her standing right here. And there you go. If you couldn't already tell, she's actually a little bit shorter than Arkham Asylum Harley Quinn. But again, it's mainly because of the molding. Like you, you saw right there, he, she doesn't have the platform boots anymore. She does have heels, but they start to end towards the as you get closer to the, her tippy toes. But also her hair is um, differently molded and it's not as huge. So obviously it's not going to be, it's not going to reach as high as her hair does over here. So that also kind of makes her seem a little bit small. And needless to say, the paint applications are a little bit different. But the, the little attention to detail is still a little bit more prevalent. Like I stated with Arkham Asylum where they actually went ahead and wrote out the text that it's actually on her ID tag there on her chest. Which I thought was a very interesting touch, as was the vibrant detail in the paint for her face. It is actually a similar case with Arkham City Harley Quinn over here. First of all, her paint application also looks very, very nice, especially the little detailing here at the top of her forehead. And, you know, they captured it very well, as well as her hair. I mean, it's not as detailed as the other one, and again, I, I wish I could have seen what they did with her hair in the regular Arkham City version where it's blonde and then you got the red tips here. But still, the detail overall is great and my favorite parts about the paint applications will have to be the little bits of tattoos here on her bicep. You got a little bit of a tattoo right there and if you can look and if I get the camera to focus, there's actually a Joker card imprinted inside of that tattoo and I think that's actually rather cool. 
And she also has a, another tattoo over here by her um, waistline. And I think that's actually rather nice. The detailing in that tattoo uh, paint application is really, really cool. So, the paint is still up to par with the Arkham Asylum version, even if I would have preferred to have the standard Arkham City Harley Quinn. And actually, before I put her down, much like with Arkham Asylum Harley Quinn, she comes with a gun. In the original, she came with a Titan gun that you see right there. Here, she just comes with a regular pistol that's actually rather huge and looks like it could definitely pack a punch. And it fits into her into this hand specifically very nicely because there's no way that she's, she's going to be able to hold it with this hand. I mean, I tried. It just doesn't seem to work. The awkward thing, however, is that her index finger is extended and doesn't really wrap around the trigger, or at least where the trigger would be, so it looks kind of awkward. I mean, the one with uh, with uh, Arkham, Asyl uh, Arkham Asylum Harley Quinn, it doesn't wrap completely all the way, but it looks like she's about to put it into the trigger. So that was a nice little touch that looked just a tad bit realistic, so to speak. But with but with Arkham City Harley Quinn, her index finger being extended, it just looks kind of strange. It's like she's trying to point and aim at the exact same time, like, You! You! B-Man! Whatever. <laughs> That's my Tara Strong impersonation. Still, needless to say, she actually looks pretty badass holding that gun and pointing it at the camera like so. That's actually, that's probably going to be my, uh screenshot of the of the thumbnail that's the thumbnail right there thumbnail, thumbnail material yes so overall harley quinn from arkham city is a it's, it's a great it's a pretty good figure but there's no denying that they simply just went back to the computer before the 3d the 3d printing process and just changed some of the things so that they can actually make the figure resemble the version from arkham city now i wish i could have gotten the original arkham city harley quinn but uh, this is the one that came with the pack, but I can't complain too much because she wasn't the primary focus as to why I bought that four pack. So being that she's about halfway the same as the original Arkham Asylum Harley Quinn, I feel it's appropriate to give her the exact same rating as I did with the Arkham Asylum version, which is a solid 7 out of 10. At least I believe it was a solid 7 out of 10. I don't know, I can't remember what I gave the original Harley Quinn, to be honest, but I do remember it being around 7, so I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Anyways, that's about it for my Arkham City Harley Quinn figure review. Let me know what you guys thought of the figure if you do own it, but if you don't, will you be buying it after watching my review? And do you guys have any kind of expectation for the Harley Quinn figure that's going to be released from the Arkham Knight toy line? I personally feel like she looks just a tad bit weird, both the design of the figure and the design of the character and the game in general because it's just kind of weird to not have her have something around her eyes whether it be makeup or a mask like you see before you she she looks almost like a different character but that's just me thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next time